Welcome to the Sultans of Sales podcast. I'm your host, Jamil Pendleton. My friends call me Jay. Today on the show, we have Joe Mullings. Joe likely needs no introduction, but if you don't know him, you need to Google Joe Mullings because he's everywhere. And one of the things that we're going to talk about today is how we came to know one another and why that's important for those listening. And so, Joe, I, I, I could not do you justice to give the audience a, a, an introduction of, of who you are. So can I kick that over to you? Because you're, you're <laughs> a pro with this, and I'm going to delegate that to you, sir. Sure. Uh, uh, I'm a dad. I'm a... <laughs> nice. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an adventurer. Um, I prefer not to define myself by... Uh, my job or the organizations I've built, although I think we express ourselves through them without being, you know, too ethereal. Um, so we, we we started the Mullings Group 30 years ago, executive search firm, headhunting company, uh, have dominated the med tech, health tech industry for those three decades, based on pure empirical numbers, uh, more than 8,000 successful searches and um, career enhancements and built hundreds of companies, emerging tech primarily. Um, we also have Dragonfly Stories, which is a production company uh, that is a Tele Award winning production company that we started about five and a half years ago. Uh, we've got 160 Studios, which uh, I'm sitting in today, which I'm proud to say is probably by far the most advanced and coolest studio in the med tech, health tech industry located down here uh, in Delray Beach. I like to think about it like Abbey Road for the Beatles or Sun Records for Elvis, right? It's where it. it's where it all originated. And you've been here, so you understand what it's like here. Special. Uh, and then TMG360 Media, which is a media company that caters to uh, the emerging med tech companies that are either looking for attention, awareness, clinical trial recruitment, funding, or M&A activity. Uh, again, TMG360 Media. So that's where I keep myself busy. Uh, at the epicenter of all those and surrounded by a fantastic team in each of those respective companies. And I've met, thank you for that. And I've met some of your team and, and, and they're fantastic. And you just I think teams is going to be a central theme to, uh, to this conversation because it's all about the synergies. And, and, and when you and I've talked, it's, it, it comes back to um, what you've done. And, and, and I should say this, it's not done. It's what you're doing is, truly unique and special. And from my perspective, your vision and your style are unmatched um, in the industry. And part of that comes from the 30 years you've been doing this, you've been working with leaders of teams, you've been working with visionaries, CEOs, surgeons, right? Uh, startup, venture capital. Uh, but but it, goes, it, it goes beyond that. I think there's something about you, Joe. You're, you're a... You're a phenomenal storyteller, and the story is what grabs people. And I've experienced this just a little bit, but you are who I think paved that way for me. Uh, you, you give us the audience, you give us such a uh, such an exciting uh, adventure uh, as you tell these stories, uh, whether it's through Dragonfly or through your own LinkedIn, which is where we met or where I first came to know you, Joe. Um, and I would say just you, you inspire debate, you inspire thought, you inspire me and others to just reach in and, and, and go deep and, and, and provide value. And first and foremost, I love this. It's my daily, it's, you were one of those people that I search for on a daily basis. It usually hits my feed, but if it doesn't, I go find you and see what you got going on. So don't ever stop because it's super valuable to me, but why, why do you do this? I want to get just a little bit from, from the, the, from Joe Mullings himself, who's early and, and, and created a trend. Why do you do this? Um, well, I'd say primarily because it's therapeutic for me, right? So while I, I it, it really is, is, is I've had the privilege to sit sort of, uh, ringside courtside, for 30 years, as you pointed out, with some of the most amazing, amazing entrepreneurs in the med tech, health tech industry, and even those outside of it in the media world as well, have had you know some some fantastic um, examples of what to do and what not to do. Uh, and then, you know, 
we're all works in progress. And, and, and so when you, when you start to look at it, something that you want to put as an ideal, um, you immediately can start to put yourself in an area of grading or judgment, which a lot of times can incapacitate people is when we look at our mentors or we look at those that we aspire to be, you know, it's easy reflexively to look at that and go, oh, shit, I can never become that. And therefore all of a sudden, we, we find all the reasons why we can't become that. On the other side of that, though, is you can look at um, these, we're, we're target-seeking beings, really. We really are. And so when you put this, this, this Valhalla on the table or up, way up in the sky, um, you could start moving towards it. And, and, and then you have to start a self-examination, right? Especially as you circle around, you know, this, who you want, who you think you want to be. And, and that will change from Friday to Friday, by the way, because as you gather more information, you start to realize that eh, it's not exactly who I want it to be. And here's the reasons why. And this is how I'm going to modulate it. So the content creation started around that, around this journey of improving this incredibly flawed person who remains incredibly flawed, uh, but always a work in progress. And um, mm -hmm. I basically live those thoughts out loud online as I um, seek to better understand, seek to improve, and then just share my experiences and my observations with who's ever willing to listen and, and watch. And it always revolves around building, teaching, or inspiring people. Mm -hmm. Always. You can always, you can always bring it back down to those car three carbon base um, characteristics. Build, teach, and inspire. Yeah. In that, I think, so it's incredible because I've seen it. I've witnessed it firsthand. I've emulated some of it in my own way and with my own background. Um, but you've got this savvy and boldness about you. And maybe that comes from your MMA background, which we could talk about, but you, you, you don't pull punches. You make claims mm -hmm. you, 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 you've, uh, and I, and I think you have a, a really deep fundamental understanding about the market and the trends and kind of where things are going. Uh, you've spoken recently about that. Things are changing, right? Work from anywhere, uh, the different, uh, I guess, the digital transformation, you, you know, a lot of these trends that are, that, that, that are happening right now. But given that you have a pulse and it puts you in the pole position, Joe, to make these claims. Um, it, and I just... I don't know what the question is. You've been early. That's what it is. And, and so you know, we, we reference movies a lot. And it's almost like you've got that almanac from Back to the Future too. And you're coming back and you you see things in a different light. I'm not trying to blow smoke, man. I just, you seem to be early on a lot of trends. And I, I, how do you know? So for, how do you know? The, how do you know to articulate something? Is it, is it a gut instinct? What, what, what is that that gives you the ability to make those, those bold claims? Mm. Um, well, thanks, first of all. Uh, you know, we have been right on a lot of things and other things um, we're waiting to be right. So I would say that. Uh, but, you know, when you, when you sit in the pocket, like let's, let's, let's look at like a Tom Brady to, you know, we, we all love sports. Well, some of us love sports analogies is the ability to see patterns emerge and, and be a student of the industry or the business that you're in and patterns are patterns, right? I mean, yep. on a football field, you can only move so many different ways, right? Physics cause that and just physical prowess causes that. And then as you log in and you know, human nature and you know, capitalist markets and you know, free markets, and you know the things that came before you and you watch closely those patterns, um, you can start to, with a level of precision, if you really care and you really pay attention, you can start to be pretty predictive with a level of accuracy that can be relatively high on what is going to happen. And, you know, especially in med tech and health tech, we've got some things that are non-negotiable like the FDA. We've got some things that are non-negotiable like reimbursement. We've got some things that are, um, starting to be negotiable, uh, where the big strategics um, are not the leaders in the emerging technologies, meaning imaging, navigation, um, um, robotics, robotics. Uh, mm -hmm. visualization, predictive analytics, uh, advisement. Um, and, and, and so it's really not 
that difficult if you really watch what's going on and what's watch behaviors of humans of where this industry is going to go, regardless of how hard some of the big players try and impede that. Um, right. the, the, the free market will allow product to flow, people to flow, centers of care to flow, behaviors to flow, to follow. So, you, you know, but you've got to care and you've got to immerse yourself in it. You've got to spend 60, 70, 80 hours a week doing nothing but watch that. Yeah. And, and, and I think history repeats itself, right? And you're, you're obviously well studied on, on the trends. Patterns do, right? Patterns mm -hmm. repeat themselves. History is, is, is a higher fidelity signal, um, but patterns repeat themselves time and time again. And you, your ability to identify those patterns and, and realize, well, this happened in the auto industry, or this happened in the internet industry, or this happened in the consumer products industry. Again, we've got slower moving uh, impedance uh, in mm -hmm. our market with the FDA and this right. big strategics in there. So yeah, patterns repeat themselves. History tends to um, have a, a similar path because of patterns. Well said. No, yeah, that's a, that's a great point and great, great redirect. Let's let's pivot to our first meeting in person because yeah. I think this has a parallel to what you're talking about. NAS Chicago. I remember it, man. I remember it. 2019, yeah. right? Yeah. Pre-pandemic. Yeah. I I think been following you on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm not exactly sure where I, I wanted to go back and look and see when we actually connected. I'll do that. But um I was I knew who you were based on your your LinkedIn and your your writing and and, and the style. It's just I've gravitated towards it. And I saw you and there were two, at least two camera people walking around with you. You know, this is before I think uh, anybody did it. Anybody anyone did, it. did it. It, it, it. And again, it reminded me of Bourdain, right? Who's just, I just watched Roadrunner, one of the most phenomenal films I've ever seen. But it reminded me of that, of just this, you got this aura, you, you've got subject matter expertise, right? They're, 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 you're not an actor. You've lived this and now you're, you're there in the moment in the pocket in Chicago. And I just was like, I got to go meet this guy, right? I'm the type of person that I'll go up and introduce myself. Like Mark Wahlberg, I saw him in Dallas when he was filming Invincibles or Incredible or whatever it was. And um, you just, you just go strike up a conversation. So I came up to you <laughs> and introduced myself just to thank you for what you're doing. And, you know, little did I know where, where, where that, uh, where our relationship would lead. You know, yeah, I, re I remember that very clearly. I remember the spot on the floor that happened because you, 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 I, I, I've been again, privileged enough and fortunate enough for a lot of people to introduce my, themselves at those shows. And we were the first with uh, cameras at shows, the first getting chased off the floor early days with the cameras. We used to have to smuggle them in um, and keep them on a little gimbal. You know, now we swing around the big Aries uh, around like nothing, but yeah. And, and, and that was years ago. And I do remember that. And then I went to, I think, seek you out over at your booth at the time. Um, mm -hmm. yep. uh, but, but, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's been a really fun journey on that. And it was, and it, and it took a lot, you know, uh, we had to be pushed and I had to be pushed mm -hmm. by my production team, um, in order to do that. Cause it, it was very, um, in, it, it was very, it made you very self-conscious to walk around with cameras pointed at you all the time That's right. um, and, and worrying about what other people say mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and um, took a lot of heat, took a lot yep. of heat early on that. You know, you're a headhunter, dude, stay in your pocket, be a headhunter, yeah. right? You know, you, what do you want to be an actor? What do you want to be a TV star? I'm like, none of those, right. none of the above. And we've had, my team will tell you, we've had the opportunity to pursue that, no interest. Um, but what we did know was that the health tech med tech message needed to be shared um, and scalable uh, across the entire industry. And we knew that other people, no such thing as copycats, other people would take the concept mm -hmm. and then put their own voice to it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one of my guys just came back from our SNA, um, Wes Kennedy Sita. He was out there recently. And he's like, Joe, I think I counted at least 30 to 40 people walking around the show with camera crews behind them. Unbelievable. And it was funny to remember because it actually took place um, at the same uh, convention center uh, in Chicago. Wow. RSNA is so big, it can only be held there uh, at the McCormick Center. And I think ours was, that was the Nash show at the McCormick Center. That's I think right. that was the same year that, um, um, shit, they released their robot. And we even had uh, cameras, Nuvasive. 
Mm -hmm. And they even had cameras in the uh, Museum of Art there. We brought in cameras and we got all kinds of heat there too. So it's right. just bringing back some memories for me. Well, but okay. Uh, and it's interesting because, because that obviously was 2019, mm. fall, September timeframe. And then obviously 2020 happened. 2021, I didn't go to the Boston. You did. Mm -hmm. it, was that the last fully attended uh, exhibition for for the spine and orthopedic industry in your in your estimation um well ortho aos this year was not bad i was at aos um shortly before nas i think this year um nas nas was nas was interesting um it's much smaller obviously mm -hmm. uh aos we had sages then aos then nas um, Sages is a heavy robotic soft tissue that was underwhelming, under attended. That even J and J didn't even have a booth in an area that they have a billion dollar business. That was a statement. Then wow. we went to AAOS right from um, Sages, I think, and AAOS had all the. That, that's the big ortho show for for those that don't know. That's the big ortho show. That had incredible booth space, but very light attendance on the clinician side. Mm -hmm. And then NAS in Boston shortly thereafter was um, sparsely attended. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I mentioned them earlier. Nuvasive wasn't even there. Right. Um, and so it, it got us thinking now about, for a while now, how conferences are going to be dynamically different moving forward. Yeah. And I mean, I can see what we've all experienced with the rise of this type of interaction, whether we're recording for a podcast or just getting together and gathering online, it's, it's incredibly valuable and efficient. You know, surgeons don't like to waste time. Nobody likes to waste time. And not that the conferences are a waste of time. It's just, and you've written about this recently, ROI, right? It's, a, it's, an, it's, an, it's an incredible expense to put on those shows, for for a large strategic company or for any company, a startup like mine, it, it, it's 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 an investment, and you have to be careful where you're putting your dollars. Well, yeah, you know that's that's the headline, right? And that's the one, and I would agree, and 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 I've talked about that for quite a few years now. But let let's really look at. I, I do think the conference business was already a dead body looking to be buried. Nobody just had the courage to bury it yet. I wrote about that recently, mm -hmm. but. And it was before the, the the pandemic. So so let's let's look at the pure physics of this, right? For a second, Shay. We look at shows. Shows happen once a year. Um, and whether you're a large strategic or you're a small emerging tech company who is is thinking about or have thought about spending money on that, you're gonna wait for a one time a year. And maybe if you're insightful, you're build up to it a little bit, and you'll have a little follow-up afterwards, and there you have it. Mm -hmm. Um so I, I don't think conferences are going to go away. I think the way conferences are leveraged will change dramatically. And, and, and here's why. We still close business face to face. That's right. And this, and this, is, this is where I started this six years ago in a major contract with Google and J&J. &J. In our headhunting business, so if you're a salesperson or you're a corporate executive, listen to this very closely right now because you're about to get the book to success moving forward in, in, in the med tech or sales in general industry. But let's keep it med tech. In the headhunting business six years ago, when we got this contract with Google and j and all of, all of search was one phone call, one point of contact, one conversation. And when Scott Hunnikins brought me in and we had to bring 300 people in in less than 24 months in the Bay Area for a robot, it was unfathomable if you did the math backwards to mm -hmm. hit the numbers you had to hit. You just couldn't have that many conversations. And so that conversation always took place over a telephone. So the telephone in the sales process was the point of entry to start talking to the person on the other end of the line. And I came into headhunting and changed the headhunting world by introducing media. And the search organizations at first who looked at it said, and this is what's going to happen in med tech, Jay, and this is why you're ahead of the game. The people who looked at it first thought I was the devil and I was changing 
um, the value prop and saying, you don't need the phone anymore. Right. And I was, I was not as articulate as I should have been when I said the phone is dead, right? What I should have said is the phone is still the most important thing in the headhunting business sales, mm -hmm. but we're just moving it further down the, the, the activity right. chain. Right. It's still the thing that closes the deal. And Absolutely. so, and so with media and conferences, look, if you're counting on the conference being your point of engagement or you're, you're, or you're counting on even the conversation over the phone or Zoom being your, 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 your point of entry first time, you're missing it. Just like you, just like me, what your goal should be is you should know when we're going to transact something or have an agreement, there's got to be trust. There's going to be a validation that you have subject matter expertise. There's got to be um, a level of confidence that I need to partner with you, right? And any any sale or transaction is a partnership. And if you don't view it that way, you're you're dead before you even arrive. Amen. And when you develop subject matter expertise on media and you can scale it for hundreds of thousands of people to see a day, you no longer have to spend the first seven minutes of your first interaction convincing that person. Now, listen to this carefully convincing that person to believe you. Now you're showing up at that first call, they're already believing you. Because if you have to tell somebody something, they've got to evaluate that and decide if it's true for them. Mm -hmm. And that burns through major calories and clinicians don't have that time. But if they tell it to themselves, it's already true for them. So if they're watching you online and they're watching your content and you're demonstrating subject matter expertise and not selling, that first point of contact via Zoom, and you talked about this earlier, it reduces the friction. I'm already in process. And now all we're doing is working out the details of why this is a partnership. And that's where conferences are going to go. You're not gonna have an exhibition floor, so to speak, anymore. All of the progressive companies are gonna have people like you, subject matter experts, who are not gonna be selling. They're gonna be educating, informing, inspiring, they're also going to be developing a tremendous amount of trust. And when they meet you, Jay, they already know you. That's they it. already know who you are. So you're already entering into. So now that face-to-face, -face, if you will, is not any longer the entry point. It's downrange closer to consummating the partnership. Beautifully said. And, and I'm seeing this today. You've already seen this. I'm experiencing this, experiencing this today. Just did a podcast last night with a very well, well-known surgeon in, in our space and spine, and we've never met. And he said to me, we were prepping for the show, uh, the day before. And he also mentioned some of this on the actual episode on, on the record that he said, Jay, I, I never met you, but, but I trust you. And you were, I, I know based on your content that you're a good person and that you have a high character. And you think about these things, Joe, you're right. You're so, you're absolutely right. That takes sometimes years to develop the relationship. This is relationship sales. And, and what we're doing is speeding up the process based on sharing the expertise. You have to, but, but I just speeding think, it up and you're scaling it, Jay. So yes. the point that you have to always keep in mind is that it's scalable. My phone calls, I'm good. I could maybe talk to 20 to 25 people a day on, on the phone as a headhunter today every morning at 7.30 a.m., over 100,000 sets of eyes are on me. Mm -hmm. Now, scale that every day, right. every week, every month, every year, right? That becomes, that becomes a powerful asset. I talked about earlier, patterns repeat themselves. When you were going to buy, you know, back in the day, computers, AS400s, when I grow up, IBM, nobody got fired for hiring IBM as a, a computer um, or fired for bringing in Apple today as your hardware person or fired for bringing in Deloitte or fired for bringing in Ernst and Young. Why? Because they had established a reputation that when that person walked in out of Ernst or Deloitte, right? They're right. like, up, oh, that's Ernst. It's Deloitte. They're subject matter experts. Give them everything they need. That's right. That is the same pattern. If you construct your online sort of reputation, everybody gets hung up on brand, let's call it reputation, mm -hmm. um, to speak to the cohort or the market that you're trying to influence. I love it.
Well, and, and that's just such a fascinating point of where we are today, right? Tail end of 21, looking forward to 2022. And so as we look into that, what can you share about this new, uh, the, the ruckus in Del Rey recently that, <laughs> that, uh, that uh, I had some major FOMO seeing you and, and, and Dr. Scott Sigmund and Matthew Ray Scott and, you know, just uh, consider friends of, 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 of mine um, that you guys are building something, you're working on something. And can you share, what can, what can you share with us? Oh, sure. So, um, so it's called MedTech TV. I can, I can, I can, I can, okay. I, can, I, can I can, I can, I can share this. It's MedTech TV. You know, years ago, um, when people said sports 24 hours a day on TV or, um, news 24 hours a day, Ted Turner or the weather channel 24 hours a day, who wants to watch that? Right. Um, MedTech TV is going to be a 24 hour a day platform um, that will be an aggregator for content developers in the health tech, med tech industry. So while we will have our own content we're developing, um, it is intended to be a platform, much like you think about Apple has an open architecture. Right. But if you want to develop an app for Apple, there's minimum standards, there's minimum security standards, there's minimum UI UX standards. It is very similar to that as we couldn't possibly develop enough content respectfully for cardiology, orthopedics, neurology, soft tissue, bariatric, et cetera. But there are those out there that can, and the market is very rapidly moving towards people knowing now that they need to have high value curated content in order to speak to their masses, whether it's for educational purposes, marketing purposes, um, uh, 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 validation, VCs, PE, uh, uh, emerging tech startups who can't afford $70,000 to go to a show, but can afford $5,000 to be on a platform that will have hundreds of thousands of eyes on it. Mm -hmm. That's what we're developing. So we've been wow. working on this for five plus years. Um, we've got the team, we've got the back end, we've got the studios, we've got the gravitas. And so, uh, Matthew and Scott were down here because they represent a very interesting component and aspect of the ortho business. Yes. They also represent what if, and what could be done via marketing in, in health tech, med tech, which not a lot of people are on. And those that are on it have high attention, um, um, sort of numbers. And so 2022 is going to be the birth of med tech TV. That is going to be a news content educational aggregator that will have individuals like yourself will have their own channel on there and their own pipeline on there. And so why would we not have a one place like mm -hmm. a Huffington post did it in a certain way? Why yep. would we not have a one place go to that is a vertical for whatever it is you want to learn? And, 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 and so with the, um, with the ongoing adoption of using media, and the voices out there that bring incredible value. Right now, the disparate, right? There's not one place to go to. So the early days of cable TV, I'm old enough, I'm gonna be 60 in a couple of months. The early days of cable TV was nothing more than an aggregation of a number of people who had ideas and shows in their basement or garage and brought them in. And you know, Wayne's World, excellent, right? That right, was what right. we're doing. Mm -hmm. And there will be a little bit of Wayne's World. MedTech needs, excitement it needs sexiness it needs yeah. reality so we're going to bring that to the show as well that's awesome I mean, you know it's really cool to i mean you gave me a little bit of a glimpse of this when we were together in del rey and i think one of the things we were talking about is uh when you when you check into a hotel room let's say for this for this conference that's going to be changing you check in the hotel room right now maybe the bond voice kind of figured it out welcome and they have your name on the tv or you get maybe mario lopez kind of pitching the new movies what an opportunity with targeted captive audience yes. that you can deliver. I can push content to content. you based on your previous decisions. Yeah. I can even give you new content. I can, you know, you can, if, if, if you're a med tech startup and you want to get in front of 70 VCs with one trip down to Delray to Apple records, IE, you know, 160 studios, and you can pitch live 
as long as you've done your A round, because I don't want people bumbling their experience at the expense of the VCs, mm -hmm. right? So, so if you're going out to raise a $30, $40 million round, and you want to sit in the studio here and talk live to 60, 70, 80 VCs, and they'll be happy as well to be able to sit in on that. Yeah, that the, this, is, oh, this is democratizing media to those that either don't have it, don't have a channel to put it on. It requires years to develop a channel, years. Mm, yeah. And so what we want to do is, you know, what we're going to do is create the channel that med tech and health tech will be living on. That's awesome. Well, what a what a what an adventure that's going to be, and I can't wait to to witness it, to potentially contribute to it. Right? I mean, this is this is the future, and this is the, but this is now as yeah. well. Yeah. Awesome. By the way, we're breaking that announcement on your show. So wow, that's uh, <laughs> so. What does that make me? Wait, wait, I'm, I'm, I get to I get the law. I get to announce this. I'll, yeah, <laughs> I'll be sure to I'll be sure to coordinate that with your team to make sure yeah. we're. Uh, Otherwise, you have the wrath and Nicole on you, so you don't. Want yeah, that. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, I, I, I can't thank you enough for for taking the time. Do you have time for maybe one more? Uh, yeah, question? let's go one more. Okay. We'll always enjoy our time together. So I just want to. We talked about our meeting in Chicago. It was brief. It was great, but it was it was brief, and um, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of just a. a made it a point to say, wow, that's, that, that's someone that I, that I want in my corner that I, that, that I would love to have in my Rolodex, right? One of those kind of things. And then COVID happened, things changed, right? Restructuring happened. And, and I found myself at a career crossroads and I'll never forget uh, the call that, that I placed to you and you were, you were happy to, um, to give me advice. And, you know, Joe, it's, it's somebody like yourself who, who's got, I would imagine, uh, quite a calendar get people competing for your time you get things that you personally want to do family all that stuff and and i just want to uh, publicly thank you uh for the guidance and for the mentorship uh, that you've provided to me um i've seen you know just based on my research you 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 uh You've got a way about you that people follow, and uh, I've always been one of those people that the people follow me. But it's awesome to to have someone who, not not saying senior, but you've got enough experience. You've dealt with some hardships, right? You've been in places where you had to make a call and trust in yourself, and that's what really inspired me uh, during that crossroads. And I just I just wanted to thank you. Yeah. Listen, um, first of all, I always admire that people have the courage to reach out. Um, and uh, all, all this journey is we're all on is just like uh, paying back or paying forward others that have taken the time for you. Mm -hmm. And and no matter where you are, what station you are in life, um, there's a responsibility uh, to uh wherever you can and make the time to share just your insights, your advice. If somebody seeks it out, it's okay to give it. I right? don't jam it on people when you have no right, right. to. Um, and then you always know when people have good intentions and then, you know, like I've watched you over the years now, uh, return the favor to the marketplace, return the favor one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Uh, and, and, and that, that doesn't get advertised enough. Like the bads, the, the the bad voices have the biggest voices, unfortunately. And the good voices are quietly changing the world from a grassroots up. And you know, I admire you. I admire the work you do. I admire the selflessness that you exhibit. I admire the boldness you have in the way that you're approaching the market. And you're showing everybody that you can put your own voice on this. And and you've done it where you've come to grips with it's got to be sustainable. It's got to be genuine. Uh, it's got to come from the right place or else the entire market will sniff out if any of those are um, sort of fabricated. So, you know, bravo back to you for what you continue to do um, and, and, and how you continue to be one of the early, early shapers of media marketing um, and sort of reputation development on media platforms. So well done for you too, my friend. Well, thank you so much. And, and again, just, uh, you know, I've had a lot of good mentors like yourself in my corner and uh, grateful for that. It, it, it's such an exciting time, you know, for me, my career, where I, where, where I see 
things going, but it, it's not as much about me, as you said, it's about sharing it. And, and it's extremely therapeutic. You use that word earlier. That's probably why I do this, Joe. It's a, I, I enjoy sharing. I enjoy uh, sharing experiences sometimes as they're unfolding, as my career search was, was unfolding as today in this new role, VP of sales, what does that mean for trying to build a market, the blue ocean, right? And, and, and how I'm changing during that process is just like why I video my kids a lot. I want to watch. I want to be able to go back and look at that time and, 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 and observe it and maybe improve. And then if I can help people during the process too, then that's fulfilling, right? And it's kind of like the, I guess, the origin of why. But, you know, yeah. some people some people think it's self-serving. Some people look at what you or I do. It's like, why are you putting pictures of yourself? <laughs> like... Yeah. yeah, that's Uh-oh. true. And, 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 you know, that's okay. Everybody, everybody's entitled to their opinion and just, that's right. Um, and shame on you. If you bend it for what, if you bend it away from what you know to be, um, what you need to do. And, and, and this is, and, and you know, this, um, this is not an easy path. Uh, um, th- there are many, many, many times, um, I say many, many yet in the minority, that um, you get messages um, that are like, who do you think you are? What do you think you're doing? You know, I'm like, dude, that's okay. That's your problem. That's not mine, right? Not my that's monkey, right. not my circus. Um, but, you know, we, 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 have, we have other work to do that are important to the masses. So that's the that's way it. I think we both view it. No, yeah, absolutely. We're, we're completely aligned on that. We're aligned on a lot of things. And I just wish you the best this holiday season. This was wonderful to get to get a little behind the scenes with Joe and, and, and wow, MedTech TV, what a, what an exciting launch that's going to be. Uh, can't wait. Uh, looking forward to it and always appreciate the opportunity. Uh, anytime my friend. You bet. Well, thank you all for tuning in to this exciting episode of the Sultans of Sales podcast with Joe Mullings. Uh, tune in next week. See ya. See ya.